Well, good morning, Axe family. This is Kyle here, and it is a lovely Monday outside. Uh, we're going to be starting a little bit of a journey today. Uh, yesterday was Palm Sunday, and we kind of saw the triumphant entry of Jesus, but what we're going to be doing for the next couple of days leading up until Good Friday and then eventually Easter Sunday is look at this Holy Week, look at this week of experiences that Jesus had. And each day we're gonna highlight a different one and we're gonna look at that in a little bit different way. So we're so excited that you are here today with us. Uh, we're gonna be looking at Matthew chapter 21 and it's a particular story of Jesus and a tree. But before we get into that, I wanna tell a little bit of a story from my life. Uh, I was trying to put a timestamp on this and I think I was probably second, maybe third, possibly fourth grade, somewhere in that range. Uh, and it was Halloween. Halloween was a big deal when you are a kid because it is the best chance for you to get just a ton and ton of candy. So I remember uh, you you get your costume on, uh, you, you plan all that out, you go out and around the neighborhood, you go from house to house, you do all this walking, you walk up to these uh, doors, you knock on them, you say trick or treat, you extend your bag. Uh, there's a lot of work involved. All right, and it's a team effort. That's what I love about Halloween. It's a team effort because I'm carrying that part of the agenda. The other part of it needs to be carried out by the homeowner. And their job is actually the really easy job. I'm doing all the work, I'm doing all the legwork. All they have to do is in advance purchase some really good candy. And when I say trick or treat, put it in my bag. It's not that hard, it's not that complicated. And I remember this particular year uh, I finished, I was doing all these laps around my neighborhood and it was really great. And I remember having a, a bag full of candy and I got home and I was starting to separate and figure out what do I wanna eat first and what's gonna be the best. And I was uh, putting my hand in the bag and you can kind of tell by that point the different wrappers. So you could say this is a Milky Way or this is a Three Musketeers and you don't even have to look at it. And I remember feeling a wrapper and I remember saying to myself, I don't know what this wrapper is. There's something unique in here. And uh, as I pulled it out, what I saw was a Fig Newton. Now, as an adult now, Fig Newtons, uh, I have no problems with, they're, they're fine. Um, but when you're a kid, and your hope is Sour Patch Kids and Junior Mints and Skittles, a Fig Newton can be a little bit of a letdown. Uh, especially when you consider all of the effort that I put into this and everything that I was willing to do and all the homeowner had to do was to take some M&Ms and put it in my bag and no, I got a Fig Newton. It was almost like they didn't even give me anything because there's no way I was gonna eat that Fig Newton. Look at the story of Jesus on this day in Matthew chapter 21. Jesus is walking along the side of the road and he's really hungry and he sees a tree. And uh, he sees this tree and it's a fig tree and he walks up to the fig tree and his expectation is there's gonna be fruit from this fig tree and I'll be able to eat this fruit and my, my hunger will go away. And he looks up in the tree and there's no fruit. It's barren, it's empty, there's nothing to it. And the disappointment on Jesus and the frustration of Jesus is because uh, that we see comes from him knowing everything that went into that tree. You see, God is our creator, gave that tree its design. God is that creator, gave that tree its purpose, and it gave it everything that it needed to carry that purpose out. It gave it the room to grow, and it gave him the, the water that it needed, and it gave him the, the space and all this kind of stuff, and the, the sunlight, and everything needed for this tree to grow, and for that tree then to produce fruit was given to it. And it failed. It didn't do what it was supposed to do. Think about that message in relationship to us. We have a creator in God who created every single one of us and not only created us, uh, but created us unique, which is a powerful, powerful thing. And then from that, look at this week of Jesus and look at the lengths that God was willing to go to on our behalf out of his great love and grace and mercy for each and every single one of us. You see, we have this God that has given everything to us and given us everything over and over and over and over and over again and gave it to us out of love and not out of obligation or expectation, but simply out of his grace and mercy. And then in turn, the expectation of us as his creation is simply this, that we're fruitful, that we take that love and that grace and that mercy and that we pour it out into this world and that we show it on a constant basis so that people may know of God through our fruitfulness. We are in the midst of Holy Week and it's kind of a unique Holy Week right now. We need to acknowledge that, that our circumstances and our setting and everything going around is a little bit different. But the expectation for every single one of us as God's loved creation is still the same. That we go forward and be fruitful. That we show his love to the world today more than ever. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. We're going to be back this entire week each day at noon with new content, new videos, and a new word from God. Have a great day.